going on vinyl community welcome to another video with the record spinner in today's video i'm going to be jumping on a bandwagon that a lot of people here in the vinyl community have jumped on this year and that is the whole vinyl tag of 2018. I have been meaning to do this video for a long time and I was going to have this video be my first proper upload on this channel when I started it around January, uh, but I figure since people are still doing the tag and it hasn't died down yet, I figured I'd jump on it now instead of having to wait for next year to do the 2019 final tag. So with all that being said, let's jump into the 20 questions that I will be answering in this video with the first one being first video you ever saw in the vinyl community. That is a very specific question, and I hate to say it, but I don't remember what video it was. But I can say that uh, the vinyl community YouTubers that I watched first were Jarrett over at Vinylize, LJ over at uh, BioCYTE1, the Vinyl Geek over at Vinyl Rewind, and Frank over at Channel 33 RPM. Uh, I still enjoy uh, videos that come out of those guys and I enjoy them then and they're just really great at what they do and it's thanks to them that I really got into the whole YouTube vinyl community. The second question is, favorite record that you discovered via a VC video? So there's a channel called The Vinyl Corner that did a video on Jack White's label Third Man Records. And one of the label's aficionados, Ben Blackwell, was talking about some of the releases that had just come out at the time or were going to be released. And one of the records that he mentioned was this album. This is Public Nuisance, Gotta Survive. Uh, this is an interesting blend of like psychedelia and garage rock. This is just a very interesting listen and very enjoyable listen. Um, there's an interesting backstory to this record. Uh, this was produced by Terry Melcher in late 68, early 69. And then in 69, he got caught up in the whole Charles Manson thing. So all of his projects that he was working on at the time kind of went on a shelf and never uh, were to be released. And this was one of those albums. And it was finally released back in 2012 under Jack White's uh, Third Man Records label. And uh, interesting thing, uh, the drummer right here is a guy named Ron McMaster. He actually ended up becoming a well-renowned uh, vinyl mastering engineer. So there's a little bit of history for you with this release. Really worth investigating. The next question is, what are your other hobbies? This is kind of tied in with another question that's in this tag. So I'm going to wait off on that and jump to the next question, which is, why did you start to collect? If I can recall, I think um, I did a whole video on why I collect uh, vinyl, which was my first uh, upload on the channel. But I'll paraphrase it by simply saying I became obsessed with this idea of owning physical media in general and just having a record, an album that you love in your hands and just to listen to it as a continuous piece from start to finish without skipping through tracks or getting to a certain part that you like. Because, I mean, yeah, you can drop the needle onto a certain groove to hear a certain part of a song, but that's a lot of time and maintenance. And for when it comes to vinyl, it's just a nice thing of dropping the needle and just taking it all in in one go. You know, there's nothing quite like it out there. So that's why I really got into vinyl, uh, collecting it. And as time has gone on, I just became in, into the whole sound of it. And when I say sound and like, I mean that in the sense of how it was mastered and who mastered it. Like I kind of got into that whole thing of like mastering engineers and what sources it was from and everything like that. So I really got into it uh, later on in that sense, but that's essentially why I collect. Uh, the next question is, do you play an instrument or are you in a band? Now this ties into the hobbies question. Uh, I myself am a musician. Um, I've been, I, I would say I've done bands ever since middle school with various friends of mine and whatnot. Uh, it wasn't until I graduated high school and started college that I actually branched out on my own as a solo artist. And ever since 2016, I have actually released two albums under my name. This is my self-titled debut. And then I just released this last year in October. This is my second album, A Foot in the Door. Um, it is available on Bandcamp. Um, I'll drop a link down in the uh, description below. And this is also on uh, iTunes, Spotify, 
Amazon, all kinds of digital streaming formats. So it's it's like singer songwriter type stuff. So if that's your kind of thing, it's uh, well worth investigating. A little bit of a shameless plug there. That's what you got to do. Uh, next question is: Ever work in a record store? Technically, I do. Um, I work at an FYE, and I'm sure a lot of people can sympathize with the fact that FYE is a bit of a far cry from what it used to be. Because even when I was a kid, before I got into records, like I'd buy my CDs and cassettes all the time at FYE. But now, with you know, digital, you know, being the main format of taking in works, whether it be music or film. Uh, we've drifted away from physical media and it's becoming a bit more of a trendy store selling like the Funko Pop figures, uh, shirts, plushies, toys, things like that. But we still do sell uh, physical media such as CDs and DVDs and Blu-rays. And we do sell vinyl and turntables and turntable accessories. Uh, one of the great things that I love about working there is that when it comes to customers that are looking for records or anything vinyl related, such as turntables and whatnot, it's all directed to me because I know, I know my stuff. <laughs> so that's, that's a cool thing. And another great thing about working at FYE is that they're one of those companies that'll do exclusive pressings of albums. And for me as an employee, I get to kind of see what's coming out firsthand and what to keep my eyes out for. Uh, one of the examples I'll show is this. This just came out fairly kind of recently. This is the Smash Hits compilation by the Jimi Hendrix Experience. Uh, this was reissued around 2016 on black vinyl, but this is an FYE exclusive pressing. This is out of a thousand copies. Mine's numbered number 302. And it comes on this really cool kind of uh, splatter vinyl, which is really, really nice. And like, this is just one of those pressings that, you know, cause it's so limited, it's definitely going to go up in value and I'm really glad to own it. And it's just a nice, just dash of what the experience, uh, did. It's a pretty good starter compilation in my opinion for anyone that's really trying to get into the Hendrix experience. Uh, the next question is favorite album from the year you were born. Um, unfortunately, at this point now, I don't have any records that came out in 1997, but right off the bat, uh, one of my top favorites that came out that year is the Kiss album, Carnival of Souls. The next question is, uh, what classic record have you never heard? Uh, for me, uh, I have not really wrapped my head around like jazz records, things like Kind of Blue, uh, Love Supreme and Bitches Brew. I know a lot of vinyl community members are into jazz and I feel like I'll really like them but just one day it'll click in my head and I'll grow to love it and perhaps I'll dig myself deeper down the jazz rabbit hole as they say but albums like that I just haven't you know listened to yet and one day I'm sure I'll come across it. Next question is uh, show a guilty pleasure record. This question, for me, it's really hard to justify because I don't really have anything in my collection that is a guilty pleasure. Um, some people, you know, have opinions on particular albums and bands' discographies. Uh, but this album that I'm going to show is one that I do have a fondness for. And that is the Gene Simmons 1978 solo album. Um, the Demon Persona is on the cover but not in this record completely. Uh, you would, I'm sure fans would love to have songs like Christine 16 and Calling Dr. Love, but instead you got songs like See You Tonight, Man of a Thousand Faces, and Mr. Make Believe, which are very Beatles influenced. And that's what I love about this record because I am a Beatles fan. And you know, one of Gene's biggest influences is the, uh, the song writing craft of Lennon and McCartney. So it's really evident on this album so if you're a Beatles fan, I'm sure you'll probably appreciate this record. But um, it feels wrong labeling it as a guilty pleasure because this is, I mean, this is, it's great. <laughs> I can't say it enough. Uh, next question is strangest record. That's kind of hard to justify because I don't know what you would classify as a strange record. Um, I guess if you want to label it as strange loosely, you could say this album's a strange record. Um, this is Jack White's Lazaretto. Um, if you're are a, uh, 
tongue tied. If you are at all a vinyl uh, fan and appreciator, this uh, this record is a must have. Um, I might do a video on this record sometime down the road, but just right off the bat, cool things with this record. On side A, the record plays from the inner groove outwards. There's dual groove intros on one of the tracks on side two. Uh, there's under label uh, grooves on the labels and it actually is one of, I don't know if it's the only record, but this record plays at 33, 45, and 78. So there is some funny business going on with this record, but, uh, but I guess you could call that a strange record. Next question is Shelby Picture Disc. Rightly so. This is Emerson Lincoln Palmer's uh, Brain Salad Surgery. Uh, they did a really cool deal on their website where if you bought the standard black vinyl reissue of whatever albums that they had on their website, you would get the picture disc for free. So they did this for every record from the first one up to Brain Salad, and that's how I got the uh, picture discs for free, which are really cool to add, and I, uh, I still have yet to frame them. They're really, really cool. The uh, next question is, best posthumous release? This one was once again kind of interesting to find in my collection. Um, I was leaning towards Nirvana's Unplugged album, but I decided to go a different route with this. Led Zeppelin's Coda. At the time, this was essentially an album to fulfill a contract obligation. So Jimmy Page just got together some leftover tracks and some songs that were left off of him through the outdoor to make this album. But in the context of an album, this is actually not too bad. It's not one to jump into at first if you're trying to get into Zeppelin, but this is a really cool one to just check out because it's essentially just some leftovers, but it works well in the context of an album. Uh, great tracks like uh, We're Gonna Groove and Poor Tom, Wearing and Tearing. Oh my God, if that was the direction that Zeppelin would have went on if Bonham didn't pass away, we probably would have gotten a kick-ass record. Just, oh, so good. Next question is, what artists do you impulsively collect? Right off the bat, there is, I would say one artist, uh, maybe one or two. I guess you could say Bowie is one that I buy a lot of vinyl releases of and CDs and whatnot. But right off the bat, one of the most obsessive impulse artists that I collect is Pink Floyd. That's down to like standard albums, like the reissues or early or certain pressings and whatnot. Like I'll have those. I even go as far as uh, buying bootlegs, and even some in the more kind of rare pressings. This being the um, the Record Store Day uh, release that just came out uh, back in 2017. Uh, I paid a premium for this, which is a single-sided 12-inch uh, single of just one song. Um, I think that just goes to show that impulse buy and I'll pay whatever price. Uh, that's not just with vinyl. Uh, outside of vinyl, I have the box sets. Like I have the early years box. I have the immersion box sets. And I've even purchased like older like some, some of the older box sets that came out of the Floyd back like in the 90s, like the Shine On box. I have actually gone as far as to buy the hardbound book that came with the box just because it's a great piece of publication. Like it's that obsessive, but it just goes to show like I really love that band. Um, Kiss is my all time favorite band. Pink Floyd is second in there. But when it comes to Kiss, for me as a fan, as I've gotten older, I want things like I want a new record. I want archival releases. Like I'm not interested in a Kiss pancake maker you know waffle maker whatever like i give them credit for the merchandising ethics but for me as a fan right now at the age i'm in i want some old stuff you know that's just my thing next question is best blind buy now there's a small part of my uh, record collection which consists of blind buys like classic albums that you know i just want to have because they're classic albums and i know that my head will wrap around them I just know right off the bat uh, but this is one that I stumbled across um, I was working at a different FYE location one day and I was kind of skimming through the records just to kind of see what they sold that my store didn't sell and this was one of them 
This is Inagata DeVita by Iron Butterfly. Uh, before I bought this, of course I knew the title track. Um, and I think my dad had an old vinyl copy and he had it on CD. So I was aware of it, but I just never really listened to the rest of it. Uh, so I remember I went on my lunch break and I went on iTunes and I just listened to like the 30 second samples on iTunes of the other tracks. And I kind of said to myself, sounds like I'd like it. Put it on and I absolutely love it. And just for the sake of showing, uh, this was a Rhino reissue that had come out earlier that year. This is from 2017. And this comes on really nice uh, kind of psychedelic splatter vinyl, which was really cool. I mean, it's a great thing to look at. But then again, of course, it's all down to the music. And the music is absolutely great. I have a major love for 60s uh, psychedelic music. There was, There's just nothing out there quite like it. Uh, the next question is a blind spot artist. I take it like this is one of the questions in the tag that a lot of people were kind of confused on. Um, I guess you can interpret a, um, a blind spot artist as an artist that you've never really gotten to or never understood. And that right there is Bob Dylan. I just, it never wrapped around my head like his work. I mean, a, a lot of the bands that I'm into are influenced by Bob Dylan and artists that I love have covered Bob Dylan songs, but it just, it hasn't, you know, just registered in my head. But luckily as time has gone on, as I've gotten older, um, a lot of artists that, um, that I would have never listened to like in high school or when I was younger finally clicked in my head. Like it wasn't until I started college that I got into the Beach Boys and John Denver. You know, I would have never listened to that when I was younger. So perhaps later on, maybe in the next vinyl tag video, I might be talking about Bob Dylan records. Who knows? Next question is your favorite album cover. This one was very tricky because I hate ranking things and I hate having to compile lists of top five albums, songs, whatever. But I can tell you right off the bat, one of my favorite album covers is this. This is the Ramones Road to Ruin. I love this cartoon album cover. John Holstrom did this uh, album cover. I loved it ever since I was a kid when I first saw this album for the first time. Just absolutely love it. And it really just works well with the imagery and the you know look and idea of the Ramones overall. Just works very, very well. Uh, next question is uh, a musician you've met. Um, I have met a uh, Genesis guitarist, Steve Hackett, numerous times. Uh, he always comes around playing the old Genesis material as well as his solo stuff, which is equally as good. And uh, pretty much every time that he comes around, uh, my family and I, we get meet and greets and we always get a chance to meet him, exchange a couple words. And I can say after all the times I've met him, every piece of vinyl and CD that he was involved with in Genesis as well as Solo has been signed. Um, I'll just showcase one of them. This is my copy of Genesis Foxtrot. And on the cover he writes, To Dylan, love from Steve Hackett, which is really cool. It's a shame I can't auction it off. I'm kidding. Uh, but that's just not it. I've also met the guys in Yes when they played in Philly back in 2014. I've met Carl Palmer. I met Trevor Rabin. So those are just some of the, I think that's most of the artists or musicians that I've, uh, that I've met over the years. Um, and they're all very nice. You know, I'm not a fanboy when it comes to meeting people like that. It's always very calm, cordial, just, you know, they're humans like the rest of us. Next question is, uh, show a record with sentimental value. That right here is Dodge and Burn by The Dead Weather. This is a super group. This has Jack Lawrence of The Greenhorns and The Raconteurs. You have Jack White, who is in The White Stripes, Raconteurs, and of course, Solo. Allison Mossart of The Kills. And Dean Fertitta of Queens of the Stone Age. This album came out in a very uh, transitional time in my life as a young adult. I graduated high school, started college, uh, got my first job, relationships came and went. It was just a very um, intense period of constant change. Uh, just everything was happening so quick in my eyes as a young adult. And this was the soundtrack of it. 
Uh, this came out, I think it was in September of 2015. I bought the CD and the vinyl and I played it to death. I just love the tracks on this. Really amped up garage rock sound from uh, The Dead Weather. I love all the releases and this one really stands out in my eyes. Um, just really excellent, excellent record. Really love it and it just brings me back to a very uh, transitioning period. Uh, next question is, your favorite album uh, no one else seems to know about? When I saw this question pop up in the tag, it, it just, it I lit up completely and I really want to showcase this album off to you. And that is Smoke Ring for My Halo by Kurt Vile. Kurt Vile is a indie rock singer-songwriter based out of Philly. Um, I bought uh, his, um, at the time, and it still is his latest album, Believe I'm Going Down, which I really loved. That was another blind buy of sorts. Uh, but then once I got that record, I started to work my way through his back catalog and try to get everything. I got this for my, I want to say my 19th birthday, along with some, uh, with another record of his. And this was the one that stood out like a gem. I don't know what it is about this record. It's the flow. It's the songs. The production is great. It's not as lo-fi as his early stuff. He's got more polished as time has gone on since he signed to Matador Records. Uh, but this is a perfect, perfect record. I love this album so much. There's great songs in here like Jesus Fever, uh, In My Time, uh, Peeping Tomboy, Baby's Arms Goes Town. This is really worth investigating and just it's essential you really got to check this out it's music that you can just kind of vibe out to um draws influences from bob dylan neil young a lot of americana artists just really really great and the last question is favorite album out of a genre that you don't know well this one was kind of tricky because a lot of the records in my collection are from genres that i love completely but um, I kind of had to think a little bit in depth about this one. And that is uh, David Bowie's Low. This was the first album that is in his Berlin trilogy. And it's the first album that he did uh, using collaborations from Brian Eno, who is in Roxy Music. Um, as far as I know, uh, Brian Eno's solo stuff is very kind of ambient and uses a lot of abstract textures. And uh, Bo, we utilize that on this record, as well as draw influences from Kraftwerk and a lot of the electronic sounds that were coming out of Europe at the time. Uh, but this is among uh, one of my top favorite Bowie records. I love this album completely. This and Heroes are like, they complement each other so well. So they're both kind of on the same level, but I chose Low because just Side B is the whole kind of low suite where it's all the instrumental tracks. Ugh, so good. I believe that's it. So that right there is my entry for the 2018 vinyl tag. If you're a vinyl community YouTube member and you haven't done this tag, I'm tagging you. That's right. I'm tagging you. Now it's your turn. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like it and subscribe to the channel. See you guys in the next video. And most importantly, keep the record spinning.